let's just start off with a little bit of a little bit of scene setting. If you could share with us what exactly Zen is working to achieve on the technology front to really drive that challenger brand. So if you could frame that, that would be really interesting just to sort of kick off. Yeah, so I mean, at Zen Internet, year on year, we're established an award-winning ISP and we're really renowned for our service. But as things have been going on in the recent world with the pandemic and even before the pandemic, digital transformation was something that had been looming on the horizon and it's something that we knew we had to move with we had to embrace it and absolutely as a core aim of establishing ourselves as a uh, challenger brand in the uk and we had some initiatives that we've done across our technical estate uh, to support this and, and one element was to adopt um, salesforce industries and that was to allow us to do some smarter selling and more nimble deployment to market for products and solutions in a way that we weren't able to do at this point in time. And over on the support side of things, the second element we've been looking at is starting on a roadmap of intelligent service tools. So there you have your digital engagement, automation and AI, and that will help us insofar as we're celebrated for our service, as we mentioned, but now we've got to take the white glove experience that we do and start to make it work at scale. So with this in mind, the biggest challenge for us to support this is how to knit together our various disciplines and skills at Zen. Interesting, Simon, that's really interesting. So I guess just moving on one further step, could you tell me a bit more around the day-to-day -day challenges that are stopping you being able to attain what you're trying to do with tech and ultimately moving to your business goals? Yeah, I mean, I've been about a 10-year veteran in Salesforce now across various companies. And the problems that we're facing here are pretty familiar to problems I've faced elsewhere. And that's effectively, you've got a team of people effectively working at the coalface. They're taking in requests via an email and just basically plowing through them. And that's a very nearsighted vision. And then you've got the classic Salesforce scenario of a growing team. As soon as you've got more than one person working in an org, overwrites, conflicts, uh, lack of traceability. These things, as I say, then people who deal with Salesforce will go, absolutely, yep, that makes sense. And with no management of change, you end up with sandboxes drifting out of alignment, old change overriding new change. Most of the time you're catching your issues in live from user reports. And then when you're working on projects, you're doing 10, you know, if you're lucky, you're at 10 p.m. in the evening. Fantastic, a lot of late nights there. I guess, what was it that drew you to Capado? Obviously, I know you've been aware, that, aware of Capado for some time, I know there's a, there is history there, but I guess, what was it that drew you to Capado sort of a light bulb moment, I guess? I've been aware of Capado for a long time, as you say. I stopped past the Capado stand at a world tour in London uh, years ago, and I thought it was a really capable tool. It made change management look uh, very straightforward. And as this was back in the times when I was just a purely a sole admin, and as I started to go onto a team of two, a team of four, a team of 10, then the importance of managing change became exponentially evident. And the big clincher for Capado for me over the numerous DevOps tools that we have out there was the native to Salesforce elements. Um, I know that there's basically two worlds of native, which is actual native and then basically native in heavy air quotes. And mm -hmm. I really specifically geared to help manage Salesforce industries change. For the audience today, just, just so I understand correctly, just, just tell me what you're saying there. So a Salesforce native tool can't deploy to Salesforce Industries and, and Capado, just, just explain that, I just, just to give a bit more depth. Yeah, so Salesforce Industries is quite an interesting tool. As I say, it brings a lot of developer-centric stuff into the desktop world, but moving change is very much rooted in the developer world. You're not just managing metadata, you're also managing complex data arrangements. And you can't do that in chain sets, and you can't do that very easily with a lot of Salesforce DevOps tools. And when you get to know it, you start to understand that this is migration tools, command line, all sorts of capability, which is completely alien to decorative admins. It's a, yeah. the akin to go make a cup of tea, but telling them they have to build the kettle first after watching a YouTube video. With Capado, we're doing all our changes with clicks. And it's fantastic. It's absolutely okay for administrators to not want to code. And Capado is an enabler for this. It removes headaches and it makes hiring administrators easier as you don't have to expect them to have dev skills baked in. 
barrier goes higher and higher and higher. And it's fine. It's absolutely uh, not unreasonable to expect administrators to live within the realms of their specialization. As Salesforce continues to mature as a platform, it's becoming a place where specialization lives happily. Fantastic. Um, so uh, tell us more about the improvement that Capado has had on your team, I guess, and, and how have you tangibly been able to measure those changes, I guess? I right now our releases are regular and planned. Uh, back populating changes, it's a button click, uh, but the biggest thing is about how smooth it goes. At any point, we're all aware of what is happening across the entire org estate at any one time. And it gives us the opportunity to start doing uh, things like baking in educational sprints into our, um, you know, run of the mill development sprints. So in between doing our deployment work, we've got people upskilling, becoming trailhead rangers, certified Salesforce industry and Capado people as well. And while we've got this safety net of the source control and the button click rollbacks that you get with Capado, we're actually not using them because things are going right first time. And those are words that I'm sure people would absolutely love to hear about their Salesforce deployments because it becomes rarer and rarer the more you scale. Interesting. And just tell me a bit about the productivity. I guess I think the you had a team of eight. Um, how is the productivity looking? I know you dropped to four. Just just tell me a bit about that. It feels it feels as smooth as it ever was. A team of eight. I said we were all at the cold face. We were just in the zone effectively mowing through work we didn't know what we were doing or where we were going or what was getting missed and at the moment with four and still obviously adding to the team we're doing absolutely fine we're still pushing out changes as we normally would uh, we're managing our change we're dealing with uh, moving the change from environments and even when an architect such as myself has to dip in every now and again i can just swat in and uh, get to grips with capado relatively easily and just be part of the team as well uh, but obviously, it became less about um, seeing how our productivity was as a number. And our Capado implementation was more about um, having the appropriate tools. And this is the sheer fundamentals. Can we manage change? Can we support the business in the way that it needs to be done? Can we start to deliver a roadmap that allows us to deliver on our promise of being a challenger brand? And that's what it's there to support. And its impact elsewhere is invaluable. You know, we're starting to get our Salesforce industry solutions out the door. We've gone from dev teams taking something like nine months to code product variations to shipping these in simple sprints. And our first product that's been launched with Salesforce Industries has seen over a million pounds in turnover go through it very quickly. So we're very happy with our kind of collective tool set and how they're starting to work together. Salesforce Industries is also a great tool. It's incredibly creative, and you can do a lot more of it than just straightforward CPQ. So you need to really get a hold of your tools, use your creativity, and stretch them as much as you can. Cool. I love that. I love the nine nine months to you know to write down. I, I, I love that quote, Simon. Fantastic. Um, so I guess to sort of conclude, what would your three key takeaways from from everyone listening today from from the webinar? We've heard about it. As I've spoken, it's the visibility and predictability. Those, those are the first two biggies, and I can't understate how important those things are. But the flexibility is the next thing that I think is really important going forward. Because strategically, we've started to change at um, Zen. We're starting to pivot away from having distinct skills verticals at Zen, and we're having more horizontal slices of disciplines in order to support projects and functions. We're looking at the Capado link up with Azure DevOps, meaning that we can stay on the same page as the uh, core developers at Zen. And this is really important because when you're working on something like, for example, Salesforce industry solution, you could be tying together uh, skill sets that are Salesforce administrators, you've got UX specialists, you can be doing things in React, integration specialists, and people who are just spending all day in VS Code just to get a solution out. And you've got to have something that orchestrates this and kind of fits in as a cog rather than completely siloed away. And that's what I really enjoyed about Capado is it, it orchestrates the Salesforce world, but understands there's a bigger world to be part of outside of it. Fantastic. Simon, I don't think I've got any further questions. Anything else to add just before we, we close? No, I'm uh, all good there. I'm happy to hear if there's anything from the uh, crowd. <laughs>